Hello everyone, welcome to the Hypergamous Journey. My name is Denise. I'm 63 years old, never married, no children. This channel is about dating for mature women. So let a few housekeeping matters. I have affirmation journals on Amazon, about 20 in design, 2021 in design, different sizes, different colors, different affirmations on the cover of each. Check them out. Merch underneath this video. I have membership for my members only video uh, live chats. I will respond, reply to you first. You get to ask questions. Click on the join button to see the perks and affirmation journals, merchandise. And I have a free dating guide. Email me at the Hypergamous Journey if you want that free dating guide, the Hypergamous Journey at gmail.com. If you need a little bit more one on one hand holding regarding dating, getting started, getting back out there, I am your girl because I'm going through it. Today I would like to talk about. I wrote it down. Well, two things came to mind, but I will focus on one of them and do another video on the other one as soon as I remember what it is. A little brain fog or freeze at the age of 63. <laughs> I'll be right back. I also use my own journals. So this is one in the smaller size, six by nine. Change your mindset, change your life. Hypergamy is a journey and not a destination. We are always learning. And I consider myself to be a lifelong learner. So that is that. Which one of these did I want to do? I put a star next to this one. Getting mad at the other woman. So your boyfriend, your husband, your man has had an affair and you found out about it and you're mad at the other woman. This I don't understand even as a little girl or a teenager or a tween, 13, 14, I didn't understand why the wives were mad at the other woman and wanted to fight her. And I think this is still goes on today where girls, young women want to fight the other woman. I, I, I don't understand where this misplaced anger is coming from because nobody has control over anyone. Married, single, divorced, widowed, widower, widow. Nobody has control over another person and what they want to do. And we all know when I'm person wants to do something, ain't nothing you can do about it. Like our Kelly said, when a woman's fed up, there's nothing that you can do about it. And when a person wants to have an affair, get with somebody, there's nothing you can do about it to prevent them from doing so. So when you find out that your husband, boyfriend, man is having an affair, you know, you confront him, you're crying, you're angry, you're hurt and then you want to take it out on the other woman. And, you know, I understand where it's coming from. I've been in those shoes, but I never went to the other woman. <laughs> I just never did. I stayed right where, where I should have stayed, meaning arguing and getting into it with the man I happened to be dating and considered my boyfriend. And now at this young age of 63, I don't believe in boyfriend. I'm married or I'm single. So I am single because I'm not married. I'm no in between. And I highly recommend mature women just not be anybody's boyfriend. Unless you, I mean, girlfriend, unless you're looking to mate. And then there is, I feel, a system for even doing that, becoming mated so that it's recognizable by society and people that you both meet and when you're introduced as his fiance, even though you're not ever going to tie the knot with him, but it's the social standing that 
happens when you are introduced as fiance or wife. And even at this age, there's nothing that says that anybody really recognizes when you're at 63 and you're mated to somebody. That's my man. That's why my woman, you know, people use those terms, but they don't even mean anything. And it certainly doesn't mean the man gives you any respect either. I've heard more stories of women in mated situations that are not given titles, like formal titles, that the man doesn't claim him when he sees the possibility of getting with another woman. He will like not really introduce her as, this is my woman, <laughs> this is my lady. He just, he will like almost not introduce her because there's this possibility that he's working on, he might get some from the new woman. So he don't really want to introduce his mated girlfriend or woman. See, I can't even explain it right because it doesn't really have any validity in our social structure here in America. It doesn't have any validity. And only a man and woman who has who is driven by their own integrity will honor it. So that's the topic today. It's like, why do we get mad at the other woman? In a marital situation, you know, you have to argue it out, fuss it out, talk it out, and you have to have a willing partner, a man, a husband who wants to talk it out, work it out, and is truly sorry and be willing to do what's necessary to get back and get the relationship back on track. But as, I, but as I explained to one man that I was talking to, um, when he told me that he cheated basically on his mated relationship, that it's just never the same. The sweetness, the innocence, the innocence and quote, the sweetness, the you know, just everything about a relationship when it is untarnished and untainted is gone. Like, you know, the sweetness, her thoughts of you, her, everything is just thrown out the window, out the door. It's never the same. And only a really strong woman can just like get it back on track and go back to being innocent. And I don't think she ever does, but she is good at really trying and eventually embodying it. And he understood. He, well, at least he, he said he understood. It's like the sweetness is just not, it's gone and it's never going to be the same. The innocence, the sweetness, the I'm for you, you for me. I know you got my back. I trust you. All of that is going out the door and men don't understand how devastating that is to a woman. And part of it of the devastation is that she's sleeping with you and bonded to you and she's entrusting you with not only her emotional security but her physical safety and you're out having unprotected sex with another woman who could literally kill you the man and your wife because you're bringing it whatever diseases or whatever back to your wife but men don't really think about that they just Think with their lower head instead of their the one on their neck. So why do women want to fight, argue with, talk about, or get into some kind of physical altercation or verbal cussing out of the other woman? Basically, it's misplaced anger, misplaced feelings, because she really has to deal with her husband and why he did it. And a lot of times, it's nothing that she could do differently. He just saw an opportunity and just kept running with it until he got caught. Instead of say, this is a one-time thing, 
for a two-time thing or three-time thing, whatever. And I'm going to cut this loose because I don't want this to mess up my marriage or my mated relationship. So it's misplaced anger. She feels like she can really let loose on the other woman who she has no emotional attachment to. She generally doesn't know her personally or may have no, you know, heard of her or something like that. Maybe, you know, the woman is at his job or at his work, at the church, who knows where in his social circle, but not really close in the circle where the husband and wife are connected, socialized, ha has community, but she's more on the uh, periphery of the circle. So the circle is here, your sphere of influence, people you have contact with on a regular basis. So the woman might be on the second, third, fourth, or fifth tier of that circle in terms of how she knows and interacts with the woman's husband or the mated man. And so this intrigued me so much as a young woman that I asked a couple of women who said they had been cheated on by their husbands, were divorced or still with them. Why did they want to? And they said it. they felt a sense of hopelessness, like they have to deal with this man who they're married to or living with and entangled with, you know, financially, emotionally, children, whatever. And he's sorry, but he's just not really sorry. Like, what do I need to do to make this right? It's almost as if she's expected to get over it sooner rather than later because this is what men do. She should know to expect this because her daddy cheated on her mama or she knows that her sister's husband cheated on her and they seem to work it out like an expectation of acceptance. And I think it's that way in a lot of cultures that women are expected to just suck it up. But why does she take it out on the other woman? Because she's hopeless and helpless and she feels like it's more acceptable to take it out on the other woman because she should know better. She should know that he was married. He was wearing his ring. He always wears his ring. Even to bed, he wears his wedding ring. She knew he was married, but she's coming from a broken place herself. So she's wondering, you know, I know this is not right, but he's so charming. I haven't had any male attention in years or months or weeks or days, <laughs> depending on the woman. And I'm not making excuses for her. But I'm just talking about women blaming other women for the affair when it's really the man, her husband, her mated man, her mated man, the mated man who should have just walked away. That's what it really boils down to, self-control and him walking away. My marriage, my mated relationship is more important than some free pee that she's probably giving it to somebody else besides me anyway. And I'm putting myself at risk, the risk of death or some incurable STD. So what can a woman do? I did a video on what's your strategy before he cheats. I think that's helpful to know that if he cheats, what you what you are going to do. Walk away, divorce him, separate, ask for some extravagant gift. I don't care what you do. I just know that you probably should have a strategy just in case. And um yeah, have a strategy just in case. And of course, women cheat on men, but usually it's for different reasons. And this is a women's channel, so we're not even talking about that. So, you know, and there was a part of me too that had a little pride. <laughs> I had a little pride. I wasn't going to be slashing ties and showing up at your house and, you know, acting all crazy and screaming that you had to call the cops on me. I wasn't going to... Um, yeah, I wasn't going to do all of that because that to me would just indicate 
you just had. I just was really, really all over you. I have cried in front of the perpetrator. <laughs> and maybe even screamed a little bit. But I definitely didn't go to the other woman. I did not go to the other woman. Um, I'm, I'm not even sure I even asked her him what she looked like or what he saw in her. I didn't ask any of those questions. And as a mature woman, it's not. it doesn't even matter because more than um, likely, he either didn't care if he got caught or um, he has no self-control and I'm willing to take responsibility for my part in the affair if I helped contribute to it by being um, non, non-communicative, not really caring how he felt or being supportive or doing any of those things. So yeah, I'm willing to do that. In those cases, maybe it could, the marriage or relationship can be salvaged. But it all depends on the willingness of the parties to work on the relationship. And most times it's women who are more willing to work on a relationship than it is men. A lot of times they could, you know, care less, they already have one foot out the door anyway. And sometimes they're telltale signs that he is on his way out the door and he's just looking for an excuse or a timing to do it. So yeah, that's that's my solution is already know what your, your deal breakers are regarding cheating before it happens and be willing to execute your plan. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.